All rise for the jury. Y'all have a good lunch break. Yeah. Right, looks a little more refreshed and, <laughs> and then awake. So, all right. We'll go back on the record for 22T 1125 Commonwealth versus Danny Faulkner. Uh, Mr. Foreman, I believe when we broke, we were, uh, Commonwealth had just um, finished this case in chief and it, we turned it over to, to you. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Honor, the defense calls Gus Curtis to the stand. Mr. Curtis, if you would approach the stand up. <coughs> Your Honor, Gus Curtis to the stand. Mr. Curtis, if you would approach the stand up. Your Honor, Gus Curtis to the stand. Mr. Curtis, if you would approach the stand Yes, sir. All right. If you would have a seat and then speak, lean forward to the microphone there. Yes, sir. And I'm sorry to pick you up and back in here. <laughs> Doesn't have to be as close. We just like right over here. Thank you. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, Mr. Curtis, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could you please state, um, for the record, uh, your full name? Gus Curtis. And where are you currently employed? Uh, Capital Port Authority in Frankfort, Kentucky, and Kyle Thompson Law Offices. How do you know Mr. Falk? Uh, I've known him for about seven or eight years. We met at Lake Harrington. <clears throat> I want to take you back to the events that transpired on December 4th, 2022, and 3rd, actually. But before we get there, how long have you known Mr. Falk? Seven or eight years when I began voting. So is it seven or eight years as of today or seven, eight years as of the incident? Uh, just... Total. Total, as of today? Yes, sir. So at the time of the incident, you've known Mr. Faulkner for uh, approximately uh, five to six years. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. Okay. Um, let's talk about the tipsy cow. Can you tell us on the evening of December 3rd, 2022, what? Um, what was your involvement with Mr. Faulkner that evening? I had received a Hold phone. On. I'm sorry. Uh, they're saying the witnesses. Was it working? Can you tap on it? Maybe if you can speak up just a little bit. Okay. All yeah. right. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, okay, so tell us, tell, tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury who are going to be deciding this case today. Um, on December 3rd, how did you come in contact with your friend, Danny? He had called me and say that uh, him and Crystal were going to the Tipsy Cow to see a, a band. I live in Frankfurt. Georgetown is approximately 30 minutes from me. So I went uh, to Tipsy Cow and hung out with him. What time did you arrive? Approximately 10, 10, 15, roughly. And how long were you there for? To approximately 130, 145-ish, somewhere in that range. Did you see Danny and Crystal leave? Did they leave before you did? No, we left at the same time. And were you by yourself that night? I was. Did you leave by yourself? I did. Can you tell us throughout the night what happened as you, Danny, and Crystal were all hanging out at the Tipsy Cow? Uh, who did you see consume alcohol? Who did you see not consume alcohol? Just tell us what you saw. So when I first got there, I immediately ordered all of us a round of screwball peanut butter whiskey. It's the drink we, we drank at the lake. Um, when I took the shots back over to the table, 
Uh, Danny actually refused to drink and say that he was driving. So then Crystal proceeded to drink his shot. And um, Danny didn't drink the whole night. Like he, he did not have any, he didn't have any alcohol. Um, I offered him a beer um, on several occasions, just asking if he wanted one. He refused and stated that he had to drive. <clears throat> what is your background? I've got 13 years of law enforcement, um, the last four being a detective in the special uh, victims unit with Franklin Police Department. So you have uh, experience with um, well, strike that. So, so the entire night, your testimony here today is at least in your presence at the Tipsy Cow. Uh, Danny did not consume any drinks, despite your offering on multiple occasions. Is that correct? I did not see him consume any alcohol that night, and when I mean that, I mean he did not have a drink of alcohol at the Tipsy Cow. If I may have a moment, Judge. Yes. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Let me have just a moment. Can you spell your name? G U S S. Okay. Truth. Yes, sir. C U R T I S. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Leader. Thank you. And your first name is Gus? Gus Curtis. Okay. You have a middle name, Mr. Curtis? I'm sorry. You have a middle name, sir? I'm sorry. Larry Casey Curtis II. Is, okay. okay, I'm sorry about that. That's, That's my right. name. Uh, I just knew Mr. Uh, Foreman asked you what your full name was earlier, and you said Gus. So. Uh, what's your date, sir? 21489. So, you met them, I'm sorry, you said approximately 10, 15, 10, 10, 15. I'm not somewhere, trying to hear yeah, that. Somewhere, somewhere in that ballpark, yeah, yeah. 10 -ish. Do you know where they've been before that? I know that they said that they had been out to eat um, in Lexington. I don't recall okay. where. Oh, uh, and... Where were where did you where were you before that? You didn't eat with them, is that correct? No, I didn't. I was um, I was at my house in Frankfurt. All right, so you don't know where uh, how many drinks Mister uh, Faulkner had before you met him. That correct. I don't know that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but you think you met him around ten? Yes, sir. And you were with him till around one a.m. Yes. What you said? yes. Okay. So if later that night he told officers sometime after you met him at one, I mean you left him at one o'clock, he had an encounter with the police, and he told them that he'd had a beer approximately two hours earlier, and you say that his statement was untrue. I'm not gonna testify to what he stated, but I can testify that throughout the entire night at Tipsy Cow, I did not see him drinking. I did not see him drink a sip of alcohol. All right. Were you with him the entire time? What do you mean by entire time? I mean, what was your what was going on at the Tipsy Cow this night? Uh, there was a, a band playing, um, a bunch of dancing, uh, just pretty much your typical night out. Who was playing? I believe it was, it was a band that Danny knew. Uh, I think like Paul Groves Band or something like that. Um. <clears throat> so you were there by yourself? Yes. Were you in a relationship? I was. Uh, so you weren't talking to any other women there or anything. So you were with them the entire night, you feel? Correct. Okay. Uh, and there was no time during that time that you think uh, that Mr. Faulkner might have had some alcoholic beverages and you not be aware of it? The only time he could have had alcohol and me not seen it, if he would have drank it in the bathroom and me not being present. Okay. But you didn't go to the bathroom any time that night? Oh, I did. Okay, so he could have had it when you were at the table. I mean, when he was at the table drinking and you were in the bathroom. The only thing I observed uh, him drinking was 
club soda in which I actually, when I went to the bar to get another beer for myself, I asked the bartender to refill his club soda for him. So club soda is a common mixer in other alcoholic beverages, isn't it? It sure is. Did you ever taste this club soda? I did not. So you don't know if there's anything else in it or not, right? I can tell you that from what I've seen him drink the entire time, that it was club soda. I've seen him and I have drank beers before in the past. I know when he's drinking, but he was adamant that he was the DD that night um, because Crystal had been drinking a substantial amount more, and so he did not consume. I did not see him consume. Okay. So who drove when they left the uh, the tipsy cow? You know, who, who was driving when they left? If you left again, you know that. No, we. I drove in my car. Okay, so you don't know which one of them left the tipsy cow? No, driving. No. Do you know who drove to the tipsy? Cab? I think it's all question I have this time. Is your form any follow up? <clears throat> no, Your Honor. That's all the questions uh, we got for this witness. May this witness be released. And I would ask, yeah, if he, you're welcome to stay in the courtroom, sir, since we, he will not be subject to you. can stay there. Okay. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you, sir. Any further witnesses, Mr. Form? Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls Crystal Faulkner to the witness stand. If I may go grab her real quick. Mm. Ma'am, if you could come up here to the podium, please. Put your raise right hand. You swear if I'm with Satan, she provided the true and correct to the best of your knowledge of belief or in Timothy of Virtue. If you would just sit down and, and we may be having an issue with that microphone. If you'd lean up and speak up into it so that we get a good record and everybody can hear you. Okay. And how do you spell your name? C R Y. C R Y. Okay. S T A L. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That's your pleasure, Mr. Foreman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Faulkner, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could you please state uh, and spell your full name for the record? Crystal Michelle <coughs> Faulkner, C-R-Y-S-T-A-L-M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-F-A-U-L-K-N-E-R. And how are you employed? Uh, I'm a respiratory therapist. A respiratory therapist? Yes. Could, could you please speak up? Sorry, we just want to make sure that the microphone picks up the record. Okay? Yes, respiratory therapist. And we want to make sure that the ladies and gentlemen of the jury can hear you, okay? Um, I want to take you back to, uh, well, let's begin with December 3rd, 2022, okay. which is the day before the accident happened that night, mm -hmm. okay? Can you please tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what you and Danny were doing the day of December 3rd, 2022? Um, we got up um, that morning and we didn't have breakfast and we just kind of hung out at the house all day. Do you remember what you were doing? I know it's been a couple of years. Um, but... I think I was cleaning the house and doing laundry. So, could you tell us um, what was your plan for the evening? What were you going to do? Um, our plans was to go to Rafferty's and uh, have some dinner, and then uh, maybe go up and watch um, Paul Groves' band play. Who's Paul Groves? Uh, he's just a friend of Mine and Danny's. Okay. So, the decision is made to go watch the band. 
uh, well, very important, I think, for the jury to know. Did you or Danny consume any alcoholic beverages before <laughs> leaving to go see the band? Uh, Danny had one blue moon um, at Rafferty's with dinner. I'm sorry. Dinner. I'm sorry. With dinner, that was in Lexington. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, before, let me I apologize. I may have misstated the question. The question is: Before you left the house in Mount Vernon, okay? You're mm -hmm. still in Mount Vernon. You haven't left to Rafferty's or the Tipsy Cow, okay? okay? Yes. Did you or Danny consume any alcoholic beverages? No, sir. Okay. So now that brings me to the Blue Moon at Rafferty's. Tell us about that. Um, we usually go every Friday. Um, Danny gets his usual steak, baked potato, salad, and um, he drunk a 16-ounce Blue Moon. Um, I got my usual Kona chicken and my Coca-Cola. So you were not drinking that at Rafferty's? No, no sir. Okay. <clears throat> when you left Mount Vernon, upon departure from the house in Mount Vernon where you live, mm -hmm. who was behind the wheel? Danny. Danny was behind the wheel? Yes. Upon arrival at Rafferty's, after he had his 16-ounce blue moon and you left Rafferty's to head over to the tipsy cow mm -hmm. who was behind the wheel I was what time do you arrive at the tipsy cow do you remember um, 9 or 9 30 9 or 9 30 p.m. in the evening on December 3rd 2022 yes sir okay tell us the events that transpired what happened at the tipsy cow um, we just sat at a table, um, watched the band play, danced, um, Gus came later that uh, evening, um, I had some drinks, uh, Danny was drinking, um, club soda with lemon or lime, um, we just danced and drank until probably 1.30 or so. Did you see Danny at any point consume any alcoholic beverages? No, sir. Is that because he was the designated driver? Yes, we have a system. Uh, we always talk about it uh, when um, when we go out. Um, that if he's going to drink, I'm going to drive, or if I'm going to drink, he's going to drive. So you leave the tipsy cow Around, you said 1.30-ish? 1.45-ish? Yes. In the morning. So now we're, this is December 4th. Yes. And on December 4th, uh, when you leave, who's behind the wheel now? Danny. Why? Because I've been drinking, and he has it. And he is the... What? DD. He's the designated driver? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me what you remember happening next. Tell us, um, excuse me. I went to sleep. I remember getting in the vehicle. I buckled up and I went to sleep soon afterwards. Um, I got woken up by Danny screaming, get over, get over. And I remember racing up, looking out, and um, I seen a look like gold colored truck that was coming over on to our vehicle. And then I remember the impact. And the next thing that I remember was that Danny was crossing over me and um, asking me if I was okay and telling me he was gonna go check on the other people. When you say crossing over you, what exactly are you referring to? Uh, Danny's driver's side door wouldn't open. And so he had to cross over me in the passenger seat to get out. Um, did you try to get out yourself? I did. Um, once Danny had got out to go check on the, <clears throat> the other people, um, I looked out and I could see that the back of our vehicle was 
still out on I-75, and it was dark, and I thought, I need to get out of here and get in the grass before somebody else comes along and, and hits me again. And um, so I tried to get out, and when I did, um, my leg crunched, and I couldn't bear any weight on my left leg, so then I got back up into my vehicle and sat there and waited, and then EMS came. So EMS arrived on scene. Yes. <clears throat> and at that juncture, when EMS is on scene, mm -hmm. uh, you did not see Officer King. No, sir. I didn't see a officer until I was at the hospital, at Rock Castle Hospital. So you didn't even see him before leaving the scene in the EMS? No, sir. Because you were in the stretcher, right? Yes. Tell us about that. What what uh, what is the reason that they put you in the stretcher? What did they say? Um, when the EMT got me out of the vehicle, uh, Danny was actually on the stretcher then. Uh, once we thought that my leg was actually broken, um, I hopped on my right leg to get into the ambulance. He made Danny get up then, and Danny got on the ambulance bench, and then I got onto the stretcher. And they use the stretcher for you because? Um, of my leg, of my left leg. Could you walk? No, sir. You couldn't walk? No. Okay. And they took you to the hospital? Yes. Ask the witness, Sean. Mr. Lee. Oh, how drunk were you that night? I was pretty drunk. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, how many drinks did you have? I'm guessing five to six. Okay. Were those, uh, what was in your screwballs you were drinking for to make it um, That is a peanut butter whiskey. How much? Is it a double shot of peanut butter whiskey? Is it sometimes it was, sometimes it wasn't. You probably don't remember, I'm guessing, how many of which, right? Not really, no. Okay. Were you asleep basically the entire trip down I-75? Yes, sir. What time approximately did you leave the, uh, the Tipsy County? Uh, around 1.30. Uh, did you come straight home from that? Yes. Okay. So if I said you encountered the officer on I-75 around 2.30, would that sound about right? Mm, yes, okay. I guess so. And you, like I said, you don't remember much of that trip down the intersection? No. Uh, so you wouldn't be able to dispute it if I said the officer said that Mr. Faulkner was traveling at approximately 100 miles per hour at the time of the impact? No, I was sleeping. Okay. Uh, <laughs> But your statement to the jury under oath here is that uh, that he was <laughs> drinking club soda along with nothing mixed in. Yes. Okay. Well, no, lemon or lime. Okay, but no alcohol. No, no. It wasn't a no, vodka tonic type situation. No. Like that. You got any receipts from that night? Mm. No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, then that's fine. I was just curious. Uh, and your statement was he had um, one beer at Rafferty's, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Around what time did he have that beer? Uh, between 8 and 9. We arrived at Rafferty's about 8 and left about 9 o'clock. Okay. Um, how big a beer was it? Um, it was a short, so I think that's a 16 ounce. Okay. Do you know why Mr. Faulkner would have told police that he'd had a beer about two hours before the accident? Objection calls for speculation, Judge. I'm just asking if she knows, Judge. Well, he's asking her to speculate. No. If you know, because I don't. I think he can only ask the witness questions that she has personal knowledge of. That's why I said, do you know? Oh, and I would object to that. She, he's calling for, for her to speculate as to why. Okay. Would you like me to rephrase? Can you rephrase it? Do you have actual knowledge as to why he might have told the police he had a beer two hours before the accident? No, sir. Okay. Do you know whether uh, he, as the officer said, rear-ended the other vehicle or whether the vehicle <laughs> came into him? I know you just woke up at the time of the impact. So. Um, 
Uh, the only thing that um, I saw, like I, I said, I heard Danny um, yelling, get over, get over, and it woke me up. I raised up and looked, and whenever I did, I seen a gold-colored truck that was coming over into our lane, and then we had impact, and the airbags came down. Okay, so then again, you're not sure how fast the vehicle was moving, but I assume you're correct. No, sir. Oh. I was asleep. Oh. Um, so, you say you're a respiratory therapist currently? Yes, sir. Um, how long have you been employed in the medical field? 27 years. So, were you working for Rockcastle Regional Hospital on or about January 1st of 2003? 2003. Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, would you have been charged with a crime related to your employment there that might go to your no, character right. for we truthfulness? Object to this line of questioning as it has no relevance in the matter at hand. Again, goes to her truthfulness. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, approach. <laughs> what are you about to ask her? Oh, that if she was convicted of theft from her employer. From an employer from 2003. How is that relevant to anything that she has been testifying to here today? I think it would be relevant to her way. character for truthfulness. And I will admit that general yeah. felony offenses don't come in if they're older than 10 years, but the act of embezzlement and theft from an employer goes to truthfulness, and it's not a felony. Of course, you plenty was not a felony. Limiting it to that. Mm -hmm. and moving yep. on. Is this, yep. is this a felony that she was charged no, with? No, it was not. But it is, I think, directly related to her truthfulness. That's what I'm saying. Well, it was, I'm, she was originally charged with him, but not convicted. And again, I would and urge... Are you, are you going to address the fact that it was only a charge and no conviction? No, she was convicted, but okay. of a misdemeanor okay. related, directly related to her character for truthfulness. Okay. So you know, there's would, an exception for that. I would object. That I think it's, it's unnecessarily prejudicial, and it brings absolutely nothing to, uh, to the jury in any way, shape, or form. There's absolutely no reason for that to come in. It only confuses them, and it's prejudicial. To it is prejudicial, and, but it's not unduly well, thank you prejudicial. For agreeing with me, then that should be the excluded. standard is not prejudicial. Everything I seek to introduce is prejudicial. No, Your client, everything you I seek to introduce is prejudicial. I understand what, you, I what you mean by that. I, I will allow it on a very limited okay. basis because I do believe it speaks to the character, and the jury can take from that what they understand. Thank you. Thank you. Were you either convicted of or pled guilty? to a charge of theft from Rockcast Regional Hospital? Yes, I had a vindictive mother-in-law at this time. Okay. At that time, did you make any statements to the hospital to cover up such a... Again, there are objection, relevance. Uh, I'll see if you made statements related to the truthfulness of that. The question of truthfulness is this. If you want to move on, I think, I think it's time. Yes, I think it's time. Thank you. Or sustain. We'll start the previous question. So, how long have you and Mr. Falcon been in a relationship? Again, okay. Your Honor, I would object to relevance. Once again, this line of questioning has nothing to do with the case. I'll, I'll allow this. Uh, 13 sure where years. It's going. Okay. Do you care about it? Yes. Okay. Uh, you certainly don't want to see him convicted of the UI today, right? I wouldn't want to see anybody convicted of that. You don't want to see anybody convicted of the UI? <laughs> no, sir. Okay. Uh, Would you be willing to say things to assist him today to keep him from being convicted? Objection! Not that he's badgering the witness, Your Honor. I don't believe he's badgering the witness. I'll, I'll allow it on a limited basis. Okay. I think she can testify as to. I still believe it's not relevant, Judge. But uh, we may, I we my may be getting close to the uh, to the relevancy. Understood. Can you answer for me? Uh, could you? Question, please. Uh, the question was, is it mm -hmm. fair to say that you wish to testify on a matter to help him 
not be convenient? Oh, no, sir. Okay. Uh, but you do have a vested interest in whether or not there is conviction today? I'm not sure what you're asking. Okay. So I'm saying would there be more of an incentive for you who is in a relationship with him, who cares about it, who doesn't want to see anyone convicted of a DUI, testify to the most favorable light to Mr. Paul? Let me rephrase that. I don't want to see anyone innocent uh, okay. get... Okay. So before the night in question, did you know Officer King? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, did you talk to Officer King at all that night? I talked to a police officer at Rock Castle um, Hospital, but I'm not sure if it was Officer King or not. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> did that officer appear to be under the influence of anything to you at that time? No, sir. So would it be fair to say that uh, you know there's no <laughs> bias he might have against your client? I mean, your uh, fiance, your husband, excuse me. Objection against relevance, Your Honor. I, I, I think I've given opposing counsel ample opportunity to try and make a point, and I'm, I'm still I'm getting lost in, in the relevance as to all of this. I'm going to one allow more it. question. I'll wrap it up. I'm going to allow it. I do believe it's relevant to yeah. he's asking as to whether she believes he had, the officer had any sort of bias against her or, or them, I suppose. Um, I, I will allow it, but keep it limited. Okay. No, sir. All right. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. So would it be fair to say that based on your level of intoxication versus, versus Mr. King, that his recollection of events might be better than yours on that day? Um, at times. Okay. Uh, would it be fair to say that you could possibly be considered as having a bias toward Mr. Faulkner or Mr. King probably does not? I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, who would have more of an incentive to be less truthful in their testimony today, you or Mr. King? I don't think either one of us would. Okay. I think that's all I have this week. Sure. Any follow up, Mr. Foreman? Just one question. <clears throat> Ms. Faulkner, um, did you testify truthfully, honestly, and sincerely about what you recall about what happened on the events of uh, that transpired on December 3rd and December 4th, 2022? Yes, sir. No further questions. Any follow up, Mr. Foreman? No. May this witness be released, Mr. Foreman? Uh, yes, Your Honor, and uh, you're more than welcome to remain in the courtroom. She's not subject to recall, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. I don't anticipate any reason to recall the judge. I don't understand. Next witness. Your Honor, if we may have a five-minute recess. We we can. The court will take a five-minute recess. We'll ask that the jury step out. The previous admonishments.